Which one is that? Oh, oh at Madison Street and 94 Pleasant Street. So what am I doing with those, James? Just deleting them from the agenda because they're already done as, as, as like kind of. Oh, and I see, I, I got a hold of who I could on that 60 day, so they came in and fixed them. Everybody's got all their 60 day stuff squared away. Good. Oh, you do? Because okay, Tommy good. was off island, so I made him send one of his people in. Yeah, mm -hmm. they came and took care of it. It's people. I said, Tommy, you got to put a date down. It's just not extended for the rest of your life, Tom. You put it through like a April or I said, put it to April 1st and just get over yeah. and just come back with it now. It's just sitting here, but he's off island a lot. His brother was having surgery. That's why he wasn't yeah. here. And he has to babysit. Okay. okay. Now, I think Diane is supposed to be coming. Have you heard anything? I have not heard anything from Diane. However, um, we have enough for a form when we start so Denise can catch the boat. What is going on with you? Are you living back on the Cape? You moved into the game? Where? Sam. I can see her quivering at the end of the table. Sam, <laughs> she's going to Sam. She's another leaving a well, I'm, I'm No, I'm going to commute. I already got my boat tickets, my fast ferry round trip. Well, you, you know, know, a lot of people do that because they can't buy a house here. They buy one there. Mm -hmm. A lot of the island kids, you know, kids you grew up with are over there. Yeah, Max was getting squirrely. His son was doing the <clears throat> thing and sucking in all his money dry and doubling my rent. And I'm like, okay, that's a mortgage. So, that's I great. said the heck with it. Sandwich, and I like sandwich. It's great. It's exit two. Yep. Just down the, you know, 130, hang left in Farmersville, and bam. But not that much traffic when you got to get back over the bridge. Because right. she's right. already in the traffic when she gets on. Right. Or you get so, on 6A and just get on that way. But i got to clean the crap out of it because he did not. He was Ooh. in, I closed yesterday, and he still had his skibbies in the door. Be sure to go to the floor and hold sandwich. <laughs> So uh, I had I you know spent the night in the hotel. I was you know I had changed all the locks at eight o'clock at night trying to dump all his stuff and, and he, had, he had a roll off dumpster commercial open top still there and it was supposed to be picked up today and it was full it was full and I thought the house was empty when I looked at it. How many bedrooms? Three. What? We all should move to Cape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you want me to check to see if Dawn's coming? I don't know if we got quorum issues on any of these guys. It's all new business. All new trees, I take it. <coughs> okay. Sidna. Yes, ma'am. Did you want to call the meeting order? And oh, yeah, that stupid stuff. This is the, meeting, the continuation of the meeting. It is 103, continuation of the meeting from Tuesday, February 4th to today. Uh, President John McLaughlin, Abby Camp, David Barrow, and myself, Linda Williams, and um, we have an audio. Yep, it's running. No minutes, though. No minutes. Okay, audio, and is the TV going? Yep. Okay, audio and visual um, tapes. If anybody else would like to tape it, let me know. Otherwise, David, you want to make a motion to approve the agenda? Minus I would NIR like, twice. I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda with these amendments. First, under date, day, date, and time, it is Thursday, not oh, Tuesday, that's February one part I did 6th. not change. Okay. And we are deleting from the new business agenda items three and four for NIR, 1 Madison Street, and 94 Pleasant. Otherwise, my motion is to approve as published. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. John? Yeah. What you do with NIR? They're gone. They we already approved them. Oh. Or they were like kind. Okay. 
No public comment. Consent. New no. business. Dun, 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 dun. 67 North Liberty, an application for hardscaping and defense. Four feet high, type two white to match existing. David, you have in front of 40 feet in length. Representing the applicant, Denise Gardner. Okay, I wasn't, the reason why I couldn't figure out what was going on is I wasn't quite sure what height fence was going where. If you look, you've got it highlighted, but where's the fence oh, exactly? The fence on the fence is here. Here's the existing driveway. Right. This is this is uh, North Liberty Street here. Right. And along the edge of this is the pre-existing white fence at three feet. Yeah. And this is two new sections from the corner house to tie in, and then off the back of the end of the driveway. Is the front picket four feet also? No, it is not. It is pre-existing three feet. They did not want to tear that one out. Uh, they have a standard size poodle, one of the big ones. Uh, they had hoped just to put rivet hedge behind the front one instead of rebuilding and, and going to that, leave it existing and, and then keep the dog in with the four feet on the other side. They didn't really want, they may or may not put privet behind the four foot uh, along the edge of the driveway, but they didn't really want to, my sense is they didn't want to do that to kind of, Everything is privileged in these days, and they don't yeah. want to have that look, but yeah. they don't want to rebuild the street side fence. They want to leave that alone, and they'll put in a hedge there to, to keep the dog in. Yeah, that was one of my questions. I didn't know how high the fence along the street was. David? Well, much as I appreciate them not trying to make another privet uh, yeah. fortress out of this place, I, I do think that the, the fence along the driveway and the fence on the street need to match. Okay. Um, so I think that needs to go to three. If they want to go to four at the uh, fence and gate at the back corner of the house at the end of the driveway, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think it's tough to go around the corner and then jump up to the higher height. Mm -hmm. What would happen okay. if they came around the corner at the three feet and when they just one length in, and then they went to four feet. I just think it looks off. With a post in the middle, with a post on the corner. Yeah, I just, um, it's weird. Could I comment? Yeah. There is a pre-existing condition, a uh, similar situation, I believe, on Quince Street. Yeah. It, it can't, like, it's, it's like an not, not going, of the not going treats, of that approach. Could, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but how about taking like the last uh, eight foot section and just uh, tipping it down to, to, you know, ramping it down, angling it down to match. So beyond the gate, it would be four feet, and at the gate, it would go down to three feet. The gate would be kind of a dicey thing to figure yeah. out. Yeah, no, I'm I'm just thinking closer to the end of, to the street <coughs> street end. Um, well, my suggestion was to take that first eight foot yeah. strip and make that the three foot turn. And then go um, to the four feet in the last two sections. But wouldn't what wouldn't about angle? just fencing from the front right corner of the house over to the side yard? That was that feet. was that was actually going to be was one of the first yes. thoughts, but that really chops up their yard. And then you've got this double row of fence going on back there mm -hmm. at four feet. And and if you've got it perpendicular to the street, the visibility of that four foot section is so limited in, in its range for, for driving down that street. You're not it's not like it's parallel to the street where you're going to be seeing it all the time. The, the aspect of at least that is that it's par it's perpendicular and in passing you're not going to be seeing it. There's a board fence uh, on that little street that leads down to 69A uh, that is four feet on the other side of their privet hedge. So uh -huh. uh, I have photos of that in my iPad, and that's that's a natural to weather, but it is four feet just on the other side of their driveway. Um, it is a, it's actually a street. It's Gifford Street. It's Gifford Street. Yeah. So this right along the edge of Gifford Street is is a is a four foot, four foot with a okay. cap rail. Uh, it's got to be one by six or one by eight with a half inch gap. Natural to weather, right there already. 
And it's pretty pretty limited visibility for a short period of time. John? Yeah. You're fencing this here. Yeah. This is already fenced. Correct. The fence in the cross here. Correct. You say she has a dog, she wants to protect it? Yes, she's got a fort right. What's going in back along here? That is already pre-existing board fence around the back perimeter of the property. So, so is the whole a, whole. There's a board fence here. Yeah. Going down to here. Yeah. And around Over here. here. Yeah. And it's, wi here. it's wire it's wire to this last piece to the neighbor. In is wire in the hedge there. And then okay. and then the full length of that that north side, um, this yeah. side, John, yep, uh, along the, the street, the Gifford Street, is, is pre-existing board fence as well. On the other side. So right, right. We're looking at the map here, yeah. right? Three quarters for... On uh, Gifford Street. Yes. So there's this is three now? Oh, there's double three. lines this back there. Yep. See that line here? Yeah. Just so there's, there's, the there's board stopped. fence here, board fence here. So what's going to keep the dog in there? picket fence here. And so it's got all that fence around there, and this is, is in a hedge along here. <coughs> Do you have any concerns, John? Well, the four feet does bother me. If you, the front's going to go, you're going to change this to four feet? No. Let's stand it straight. Yes. Thank you. No, I'm not concerned. No, thank you. Okay, Abby. Jeez. Oh, um, is the standard on the street? Uh, 36 inches for the neighborhood? It's all over the place. It's a, all over the place. Three feet is normal. Oh, Four geez. feet is typical, of course, for pools and then pets that are large sized dogs that like to jump. I wouldn't mind if it was like behind where you didn't see it, if it was four feet where they could manage the dog back there. Um, With a large uh, dog, you're going to corral them into a small space. Uh, it's too small, the backyard. Yeah, it's it's. Their back porch is, is like six or eight feet away from uh, the hedge and board fence back there. John is okay. I'm okay if that first eight-foot section goes to three feet or makes the turn. And because it matches the fence on the other side of Gifford, I don't have a problem with the last two sections in the gate going to four feet. You don't think it's going to be funny having a three-foot fence here, a three-foot fence there, and then having it climb up as it goes to the house? As it goes down the road, no. no as it goes down the driveway into the house. Not really. Really? It's such a quirky neighborhood with all kinds of heights and everything else up there. Well, you're going to have the opportunity to drive by that every week and say to yourself, I did that. No, we sold the house, remember? <laughs> what about um, changing it all to four foot um, paint white picket? Or is that too? No, she doesn't want to change the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an established fence for the neighborhood look. Uh, they're going to put a privet hedge behind it to to accommodate the four feet so that the dog doesn't get through that. And I mean, so instead of creating this larger white fence along the street edge, it, I think it would be better to keep it lower. And it and like I said, uh, it's perpendicular to the road, so your visibility of that is going to be very limited. It's not like having four feet along the whole length the whole time. It's not as if one only views the property head on so that you only look at the rail. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're moving perpendicular um, and um, there's only a flickering instant where that fence is viewed perpendicular. For the mm -hmm. rest of it, you get you get this angled view where you see both the lower height of the three-foot fence on the road and the climbing height of the four-foot <coughs> fence as it goes back on the driveway. And that's what I think is tough. All right, we got to come to a resolution here. Yeah. Abby, where do you stand on this? Um, on the fence. Uh, well, we need to do something. Oh, man. Um, well, I'd like to make a motion to approve with the fence at four feet high at the back of the driveway and at three feet high running along the driveway from the street to the house. Okay. So it's three foot to the house and then okay at the four foot in the back? Yes. Okay. David's made a motion to approve the three foot fence going down the driveway to match the front and then the four foot in the back. All those in favor? Aye. 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 What do I tell the owner with the large dog that likes to jump a three-foot fence? Put a hedge behind it. Put the hedge behind it just like along the street. She doesn't want to do that. 
Yeah. You're getting into boxing in the property with all these properties, putting all your walls. Mm -hmm. Well, if she cuts the sure. extra five feet, you know, I've got a larger dog than what you're talking about in a smaller backyard. I, I, I think you can put the fence from the corner of the house to the side yard, and it's doable. Mm -hmm. I think she just puts a four foot hedge. That's it. I mean the four foot hedge. She's got to trim it. I think it's the fact that she sees all those untrimmed hedges up there that are like ours with long feet. Oh. Okay, folks. All right, thanks. All right, thank you very Congratulations much. Congratulations on thank being a landed appreciate. gentry. Well, have a great day and I will see you. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, Petrie. Two mulberry application for fence six feet high, five and one foot, uh, five and one fence. Natural weather, thirty five feet long. Looks like they want a I didn't get it. On mulberry, yeah, so I didn't it get sure it. Does. And it cer certainly looked like it was a six foot fence to me on mulberry. And I said, mm, no. Motion to hold for representation. Okay, Wait, Dawn. I think somebody, the drawing yeah, wasn't very drawing good, very and I wasn't going anywhere with this when I looked at it. <laughs> so, is this a variation on the as built that was built contrary to the approval we gave them two years ago? I think this is a new fence. The they, built, they built them, they came in and applied for a fence. We said beyond the driveway. They came in and, you know, this house is it's perpendicular. Let's get somebody the to chicken come wire there. fence is, we, you know, they came in and applied. We <laughs> said no, they built the chicken wire fence. And num this, this property was on my list of violations. And they came to us before for a six foot high fence, and we said no then too. Our dog made a motion to hold this. For representation, all those in favor. Make sure uh, we don't. Get let's do representation and a view. Okay, James, representation I'll and view. That's Dawn's motion. motion. Okay, all those in favor. <laughs> Thank you. Aye. 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 I don't know who that representative is. Ames, James, do you have any idea? It was who that is? represented no. by the homeowner last time it came to us. Pennell Ames. Yeah. Oh, it's Pennell. He was here the other night, so it is Pennell Ames. He didn't think we'd get to him the other night. And, so he um, left. and there's, there's unpermitted fence on the east side of the house also. This is just an application for the fence on the west side of the house. So get a good look at both. This is the property if you want to take a look at. Catherine, remember, please. Oh, is, this, is it already all framed up? It's all there. It's got wire wire. wire. They built a chicken uh, wire fence. It's been up for a year. I have not seen, I haven't been up Mulberry. Is it up or down? It's down. It's, down. it's up the hill it's from up Diane. The hill. Yeah, but is it, do you go up the hill or come down the hill on Mulberry? Go, go up the hill. Go up the hill. No. Go down. Go down. Go I haven't gone down that way for a while. Oh, isn't that attractive? Yeah. Oh, Kido. I've never seen it. No, well, do you know it well? No, I don't, but I can I can drive by it. It's an eyesore. Okay, we're on to number five now, which is Calhoun. An application for new dwelling. Sixty seven feet in length, sixty five two in width, two thousand ninety five square feet on the first floor, sixteen seventy six on the second. I have a good final finish rate of twenty eight feet ten inches. Let that record reflect also on the page thing I said that Dawn came in at one oh eight. She was not on Sydna, but she was on Petrie. The colors are white trim, white sash, natural leather roof, and uh, folded blue doors and white doors. Representing the applicant? Green full. Go for it. Did you guys um, have height poles or anything? Was there a like this? I don't know. It was on that. I don't remember if I put that in yet. No. No, you didn't put it on auto. No, because right? we've been out there 500 oh, okay. times. All right, just curious. Well, you know, this is another uh, building on Blackfish. What we tried in this design, obviously, was to keep it low and caught. Uh, 
you know, single story with uh, porches that wrap around a, a majority of the volume. Um, and then. Which one is it if you don't mark it? Oh, it's right. The thing here? Uh, it shows up on mine. You know, it's another one of those. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Is that houses. clear to all of you, by the way? Linda was wondering about the locus. It's on the south side of, Found it. of Black Bay. When it's in color, we like it. Yeah, yeah, it shows up well on mine. But all right, it's so of course. Okay, so anyway. Um, low, cottagey, dormers. That's, uh, that's about it. Okay, comment. Don. Um, these double columns under, on the porch just seem kind of, kind of it, I mean, it, it feels like a really simple house, and then it's got these really beefed up posts. I don't know why we're doing that. There's doubles and. Yeah, we're going for shingle style. Yeah, and it's, it, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, I guess you have no corner boards, but we I think no those top board. posts should be a little smaller and not du not the doubles. Um, I also think the dormers on the north elevation need to be scaled back. Um, and what's the paint color on this? White. Which, you know, I, I frankly have not been out to Blackfish for a long time, and I, so I couldn't. That's for me. I just have yeah. trouble with, oh, the, with the way the white mixes with the shingle style. It doesn't feel... Well, well this is right next to that house of, of, of rats at the end of yeah. Blackfish, where he's been back four times asking for the white frame yeah. on a shingle style house. And Are you going to get it? And we've said no, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> and so he's watching with interest. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, I mean, all that, the railing, and, and I don't think, I mean, the, the shingle style, that railing should probably be shingled, and you should probably go to another color scheme. Let's so you're, you're saying balance. instead of balusters to have a parapet like we've done on a lot of our projects? I don't think it's a shingle style house, period. Well, if they want the well, elements, they need to go a little Yeah, bit we're definitely like trying that. for some shingle style elements. I, mean, I love to see less painted stuff. Go ahead. What color is it? Sash. Okay. White. Well, that's what works. That's what works. It's on the door. I don't it's David, a panel, isn't it, or is it glass? Well, it I, is a glass. Yeah, it you know, work. I agree with all of Don's points. I'd like to extend a couple. I think part of the problem with that porch is the way that it's drawn, because I assume it's shingled underneath the column. Yes. And in fact, it, the shingle is going to stop. It's not going to go all the way into the dirt. Right. And the natural place for it to stop is level with the bottom of the porch framing. Mm -hmm. And so you've got it as if the each of those piers sticks forward of the porch deck. And I agree with Dawn. I think that the picket um, railing is doesn't match the... Um, the piered columns. I think it ought to go to a shingled um, railing, but oftentimes on these houses, what you saw was something about 20 inches high, and it's wide because the, the base under the column is square, and it becomes a bench that you can sit on. And you're not so high off the ground here. Right. You don't need a, don't, we don't need a security rail, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, but I think that the this idea of having columns, and, you know, so much of our stuff takes off of buildings that we've occupied before, and so yeah. this this was obviously a play on uh, 82 Easton, where our office used to be, which yeah. had square shingled bases mm -hmm. for the columns okay. that was somewhat higher than the parapet rail that you described, which was stepped down and set back okay. so that you had a shadow line between the column bases and the actual parapet but Ray, rail. That was a bungalow, and it was okay, four well, feet off the ground. This has nothing to do with this house. This is not a bungalow. You know, I'm thinking of the house you guys had in recently uh, up off uh, Lincoln Circle, I think it was, where it was a gambler roof style house that we had to put double columns under across the porch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, right. And so I'm thinking more that, a little bit more that okay. vernacular. Um, you know, I frankly think that the lower story of this house looks crushed 
underneath the upper story of the house. And part of the problem is that the dormers are far too large. But mm -hmm. part of the problem is, is that the eave height at the first story level, it just feels incredibly low. And I think that, for one thing, with the exception, I think, of the C window in the left-hand dormer, I'm all talking about the front facade here, mm -hmm. every window is the same size. It's either an A window or a double gang A window, which you've got labeled as a D2 or something. Yeah. The dormer windows on the main body of the house have got to be smaller. Um, you know, they should, the, the pane width ought to be like what you've got in the C window. It should be shorter. I think you should move those dormers back up the roof and lift up your front porch, mm -hmm. Eve, so that you can see the, the head of the window trim and the door trim. You know, it looks like a hat that's been pulled down low mm -hmm. over your eyes. Um, I think you need dark trim on this house, not white. Um, I, I give some, you know, I, I, don't, I think that there's something approvable on that front porch, but I, I think it needs to be massaged. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's there yet. It, it seems it seems clunky. I think the windows in the left-hand wing can't be pipe A. You've got to, you've got to do the additive massing thing where the dependency has got smaller, smaller side windows. <coughs> I think the cap, is the cap on the chimney brick? The top, very yeah. top of it. Yeah, like it's a yeah I don't stone. like the way that's rendered. Yeah, that's got to be used up narrow. a little bit. Yeah. But what, what was your suggestion, David? Well, I also think it's too narrow. I also think that the, the cap, whatever treatment you give it, needs a bit more half. Yeah, it's a little new. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Um, but you look at this thing volumetrically, and the uh, those three <coughs> front dormers have totally taken over the steam. Um, I, I think uh, I, I question whether or not they should be double gang. Mm -hmm. At the very least, the cheek walls need to come in absolutely tight for the window to make it work. If you do do double gang, and they need to be smaller window units if they are double gang. Otherwise, um, I'm I'm not too concerned by what I'm seeing. Such limited uh, visibility of the south elevation. Um, that the things that I wouldn't do there aren't of great concern to me. I, I don't particularly enjoy that the triple gang <coughs> on the uh, right-hand side underneath that porch extends beyond the porch. Um, it's just an uncomfortable relationship between the edge of the dormer above, the edge of the deck, and the windows below. No, I'm, I'm wait. Just wait for everybody to go. What? Wait for everybody else to go. But I just can I just get a point of clarification? Yep. You, David? Are you? Just, so first of all, you're on the south elevation. Yeah. When you that comment you just made, and the triple gang you're suggesting is sort of like skirting over the edge of where the dormer ends. Is that the yeah, issue? Yeah, you've got a line of structure. I mean, uh -huh. That dormer is sits directly on top of that wall, uh -huh. right? Typically, we try uh, to we avoid that stuff. Of the right of that wall. Yeah. yeah. It's not centered. It doesn't no. relate to anything. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Even though it's not visible. Yeah, we're not we're not going back and forth again. We've wasted enough time yeah. on that. David, are you done right now? Close that? enough, yes. Abby? Yeah, I, I like the drawing a lot. I thought it was appropriate before taking the top. <laughs> now, I think it is a little top heavy on the... The dormers. Know, the, the dormers, or, or bring down the... The, the roof height um, a bit, so it's not so top heavy. Um, but other than that, I thought it was a very good design. Yeah, thank I like you. It. I like it. John, I agree with the comments been said, and I have some of my own. Number one, in the window <coughs> says there's a B window in the patient. In the gable end, maybe. Uh, yeah, there's These are the windows. Yeah, it's oh, there's right. something wrong with yeah, the e window. window is the only case. Let me finish this. Right? <coughs> you know, we're going to change the meeting around oh, pretty soon. There's going to be none of this back and forth different. Right? And you'll just make your statement, and then you go on. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then the other one is 
the E windows, the casements. Two of them, the gable ends. They ought to be hoppers or whatever. Those are the four lines. Yeah, they'd be four lines. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I want to continue. Now, okay. which one, John? The four lines? Right here. Oh, one, the four lines. Yeah, one there and one the other gable. And I hear the comment I made that I want to. There are 25 window units, and eight of them are gained windows. So that ought to be looked into there. I agree. And we usually have a general rule of thumb when you're doing, as he says, a cottage style low. Low is 28 feet high. You only get two feet to go to go max. So it's not low. Okay, thank you. Don't say that. The windows, these, these should be gables in the front, dormers in the back. That's a general rule of thumb. The front door should be a six panel. One way or the other, different ones you can use. And that's my comments. Thank you. I agree with everything that's been said, but I have a few other comments. I don't think they should have a rail on this thing at all. I think what you're seeing, David, that it looks so squished is because that railing doesn't belong there. And you've got such a low porch even. That porch is barely six feet wide, you know, front to back. Mm -hmm. Barely six feet deep. It doesn't have any shingle style to it. I don't think the house is a shingle style house whatsoever, so I think all the shingle style pieces should be taken off it. I agree with um, those dormers. They're, they're a real problem. But I'm, I'm, and that there's too much ganging going on everywhere, except for the installation. <clears throat> I'm more concerned about what I'm seeing, I'm seeing over and over and over again. I'm seeing additive mass coming out the back of a one-story additive mass. Now, that's been happening over the last year or so, and I don't think that's appropriate at all. Why? How because that's not a, that? nobody would do that. Sure they would. Of course they would. It's, well, again, it's not the main mass. It's not additive. In this case, because of the visibility on that corner, you may be able to get away with it. But I'm, I've seen some very large two-story additive mass coming out of a two-story additive mass, and that's not appropriate. The main body of the house is the main body of the house, and then on top of the fact that this additive mass actually crosses over the two masses. It's not completely on the single, and it's into the main mass. It's actually not a single story. Please, 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 please. I have a enough hearing problem. I can't hear one of the time for you. So I always have trouble with this just in general, but this is probably, I can get away with it here because it's, you can't really see much of it going up and down the road. But I, I'm tired of seeing it. It's not working. We have them crossing over into the main masses, crossing over into the other additive mass. It just doesn't, that's not the way anybody would have built anything here for additive massing purposes. But I agree with everything else that's been said. I think the front mass is very simple, but there's some detail issues with the front mass and all the ganging going on everywhere. That, I, everything that has to do with shingle style should come off. Well, can I say one thing? That it was, I don't think the intent was to make it a shingle style. It was more, our old office had this sort of bungalow style and had the railing detail from an old photo. And I think he, that he said that earlier, but before you came in, it doesn't matter. This is not a bungalow. It's not going to be a bungalow. It's not acting like a bungalow. So unless it's a bungalow item, it's not appreciated on this house, on your original office it was. Those are different. And I appreciate the low eave height. I think John didn't quite get that. But uh, 28 feet high, aren't they all somewhere between 26 and 28 on that street? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we built one that's actually 29. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just one more comment at the yeah. end of the table. There's a house very similar to this, Debbie Belichick on, on Pittman. Mm -hmm. You know Pittman? Yeah. Um, there's, it, it has very similar characteristics. Maybe uh, I think I do know it because we did one at the corner of Coffin and Pit Pitman. Yeah. Right, so just, just down a yeah, little bit. Down, it has the same you sort of a, mm -hmm. a large cottage style. Mm -hmm. Okay. John's made a motion to hold for revisions. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We got Lady Bird. Representing the applicants. Uh, Ray Cole. Mr. Valley Road. Application for a new dwelling. 81 feet, 2 inches in length, 58 feet in width. 2761 square feet of the first floor, 19 
242 on the second. Height original final finish period 25 feet 9 inches on the north, 27 3 on the south, 25 9 on the east, and 27 on the west. We have cobblestone sack, cobblestone trim, natural roof, front door is Essex Green, and others are cobblestone. Let me see any access right here. That's it for me, Madam Chair. And this is part of a four lot subdivision? Mm -hmm. And this is the one that's furthest in the subdivision. This is the one that sits where the old house is. Yeah. Puts an old one story. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically, this sits right on that footprint, David. Okay. I think you can see that on the site plan. I think we dashed in the Yeah. Yes, Clearly. I do see it. I do see it. Yeah. Yes. Whose property was this? Mills. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mills. Very creative subdivision. Yes. Well, yeah, that's Misa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So again, the intention was to do a, a house with no leaves. They want, they obviously would be, um, there's a lot of debate whether or not we should do a two-story house that they could get a roof off. And we were luckily able to convince them that um, they didn't need a roof off. And the idea was to do a house that was more of a, a, a gray trim that sort of set down into the environment a little bit more. I mean, that's not to say that it's short because they still obviously <coughs> have a technical program, but to keep the eaves low and to not uh, you know, make a large symmetrical house. The idea was to have it be a little bit more ramping into the character. Clarification: What is this? Is this a shower that we see through the porch? Uh, what is that? Vertical board. I have to look at it. It's a staircase. Oh, that was the staircase, which oh, is which, God, which is and now gone. Frankly, we yeah. just haven't revised the drawings. But if the staircase is an issue, there was this, this idea to get from the master suite down to grade. Right. So the staircase is out. That's yeah. out. That's but the deck gone. is yeah. still there. The little deck is still there up there. Uh, no, that's no. Good. Oh, it's the deck gone. is gone too. Yeah. yeah. So what are those? Just two windows? Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's the window. Okay. So the other two decks go. Yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 the water. Yeah. Okay, Dawn. What's the color on this? Cobblestone. No. <laughs> Get your story straight. <laughs> so everything's cobblestone. Mm -hmm. You might refine that, but we it's definitely going to be gray. It's, there's no desire to have it white. Yeah, I was concerned with that staircase and the balcony on the east. So I thought it was gone. So were we. <laughs> um, on the west elevation, there's a dormer to the right that crosses know. over the break in the roof, okay. which is a concern, and to the left, there's a dormer that appears that it runs straight into the gable. Gable. Is it um, that's what I have for me. You're following, it looks like you're following the grade. No. Well, this, this, I'm looking no. at this, David. See Dramatic. the south? Look at the site. Plan. Yeah, but look There's at the south elevation. Going on What's here. happening here? That's a lot of filling. That's low. That's low. That's where the existing driveway is. But we do need a tilt on what you're doing to this lot because it's got grades going one and one. Well, you can, you can see it. I mean, they've given us the information to their credit. It's very clear. Um, I mean, we've got areas here where the existing grade is about 34 at, you know, on the, what I'm going to call the front of the house, which is the south, the yeah, south facing. Because I don't see where they're adding filling, I just see the purple one. Oh, yeah. Because the original house is sitting in the same spot. So they're raising, they're raising grade four feet. Well, no. I think of the house. No. In some places. Well, in the, the, in the lawn. Because the house is getting longer, longer. We're not raising the topo up. Yes, you are. We're actually lowering the grade where the current house sits. Slightly. Slightly. But, but you're creating an acropolis on which this thing is sitting. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, uh, 
if I, you've got the turnaround where the parking happens. You get out there at 36 feet. The ambient grade is about 34 and change. Then you go up steps two feet. So where the ambient grade is about 34 and a half, you're going up to a lawn at 38 and a half. And then you're going up again to get into the house. Because the grade, because it's such a steep site, we have to start creating platforms. Can't well, cut the whole thing down at 34 Maybe feet. what you do, instead of trucking a ton of sand to the top of the hill, is you split the difference. And you cut some of the hill down and don't, go, don't always go up. I, just, I think there's, there's too, much, too much filling going on here. Is your structure, you, let's be clear about that because I'm confused. Is your first floor of that structure at the same height as the first floor of the existing structure? Yes, essentially, yes. You're not coming up. You're going down slightly going to get down. a little bit more plane out to the other elevations. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you're not putting it higher on the knoll than no. the existing house. No. no. But it's you're planing out to get more right. level playing field lower right. because the house is bigger. And I don't really think you'll ever see the amount of topography change that's taking place, you know, on the site because of visibility. I mean, it's so still formalized. No, they don't want formalized. Okay. They're looking for a very, I mean, obviously there has to be some retainage to the site, but they're not looking to create a formal landscape. Will so it help? Is the house still there? Do we yeah. The house is still there. Will it help, David, to take a view of the site? Well, you know, I was kind of surprised that this didn't go on a view with height goals. Well, I, yeah. guess it, I thought it was relatively simple compared to everything else out there. Well, I them to it is. Take a look at it, see if there's anything else I want to know. Yeah, but I mean... I'm not concerned with the overall height of the structure. I feel like you're pushing the envelope with that. Um, but, you know, I've, I've got a concern about creating these level lawns <coughs> held up by retaining the walls. Because the, it may be at the same height as the old house, but the old house, according to your own contours, the ground just fell away from. Well, it had a, yeah, a garage correct. under part of the house. Yeah. But, you know, again, that's not it's something that is visible from a public way. That whole condition is, is completely internal to the site. It will always be. Is, is that driveway it? purely for access, or does it provide frontage? There's uh, no access in there. This is because the existing it is access. Traveled way. This is the existing that's driveway. You mean this out here? Well, they created the subdivision. Yeah, but this is coming off of North Avenue. Well, that's, that's All right, so they still have their own driveway, yes. not up yes. that side of that lot. No, this is this is the existing driveway. Yeah. And you can see what the visibility is from North Ave, Ave up that drive, because okay. it exists. Do you want to take a view? Drive. Yeah. I think we'd be better. You can go up and look at the... Simple. Yeah. With some motion issues. to view. Don't just made a motion to view. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Yeah. 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 Press the comment that I agree with. Is it somebody sent from the All those all those in favor of the view? Yeah. David, Gabby, all those in favor of the view? I said yeah. yes. And that's Thank with you. comment, James, so we're stuck with the board. Okay. Thank you. NIR. I think this one's still on here, right? Yeah. John, say goodbye. John. Say goodbye, John. All right, let the record reflect that Don is leaving at 143. 15 South Water Streets. The Sea Dog Restaurant, 1749. Application for light kind of placement of window and modified operation. What's happening? Oh, they want windows like the Rosen Crown has. Is that what I'm saying, Dave? James? They want to be able to open them? I don't know if you have any in the book. Huh. I just read the window application. Huh. 
So it's going to be a hinged unit that swings up and in, like the units do, for example, at the Starlight, except they're going to hinge a double hung, and typically where you hinge a window unit like that, you make it a fixed pane, yeah. and then just hinge the entire sash on well, What's clear... David, they were moving the three double hungs in favor of one humongous unit, it looks like to me. Well, they're, they're not. Exactly not. Sure. If you look at the elevation that says new windows in the closed position, they're still drawing double hums. Huh. But if you look down the lower left, the whole, all three windows are one unit, and they all three open at the same time, not one at a time. <coughs> it looks like they're hinged. If the whole, it's one unit with three window sashes <coughs> that opens together, and that's bizarre because when you get over to the rows and crown. Each individual section opens, so, so, and the and the and the uh, what we call it over there is that yeah, the starlight. The one each section opens. Right, and, and frankly, this is going like too it's, it's outside of our. I think it's outside of our jurisdiction. But what they're creating is an assembly that probably weighs well over a hundred pounds. So I'm saying it's not going to work. Dangerous. Yeah. Um, it makes much more sense to operate the individual sash individually. That's how it was done traditionally. And just so you know, when they do open this whole big humongous 100-pound unit with three separate sashes in it, which I've never seen here, it's going to be opening into the, the walkway. They don't open in, they open out. Right. So they're opening onto the public sidewalk, and that public sidewalk right at that point with yeah. the bushes and the trees is not handicap accessible. And, and in fact, this is kind of crazy because, and again, in marginally our jurisdiction, but they've got this thing flashed at the windowsill with the water going to the interior of the building rather than to the outside, which is nuts. I, I, I don't know what we want to get a representative in here from CDOG or just it's right, let's, actually let's, let's, let's talk to them because I think we can get them an approval on something very close to what they want to accomplish, but this is not that the is. way to go about it. They need to look at the rose and crown in the um, starlight. Yeah, I have a comment. John, um, looking at this, you know, these are all these are double hung. The rose, rose and crowns are off. Mm -hmm. be double hung individually. This is three double hungs put together, mm -hmm. and all three open at the same right. together. You, you, you're on all no, they're them. one at a time. So why don't you keep them? Keep them? Keep them mm -hmm. double hung. I, I, I think you're going to start a bad precedent by doing that. Haven't? Out windows. Well, none of us feel that that's appropriate. So yeah. your motion was to hold for representation. Thank you. It is. David made a motion <coughs> to hold for representation. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sure, the next house should have a black on it. I cannot sit on this. Um, Don couldn't sit on this either. So you only have John, David, and Abby. Okay. Do you want to go with three? Sure. Yes. No, I'm asking the applicant. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is our house. Come on up. You're next. Number 20, Desert Island. Good afternoon. Well, it's 20. Uh, I got a beat both Number eight. Yes. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. I'm beyond you. Demo in the higher building, 35 feet in length. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. 35 feet in length, 60 in width. Legal date of the house, 1925. Demo the entire structure. And uh, how is the house listed? Is it individually significant, contributing? David, can I comment on this? Uh, okay. Um, the first thing we need to do is designate someone to chair the hearing. John, would you be willing to chair this hearing? No, I don't think you do it. 
I'd be happy to. Is that all right with you, Abby? Okay, so I'll be the temporary chair for this. Absent from the vice chair and the chair. Um, I just wanted to point out something that has a lot of bearing on this, and that is what you're looking at, that seven bay elevation at Cliff Road. Yes. We received from the HDC in October approval to take that right side off. That's that's gone. Well, yep. we haven't done it yet, but that's you've given us permission for that. And part of the house in the back, which is right. a, a new addition. Correct. And we've changed it to five bays. But maybe that's the bottom drum. This is you now let me stop you for a second okay. because for the record I need you to get sure. you both to identify oh, sure. yourself. Okay. So we have you on the tape. And I, I knew you were going there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff Kashula and Randy Sharp. Thank you very much. John McGoffin. Yeah, John, we know you're here. Um, and we kind of jumped ahead. Did, did you want to make a general presentation yeah. first? Yes, if, 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 let's, if let's rewind it and let you do it all in the order. You have a plan. Sure. You, you mind just finishing yeah, that? Go ahead. Go ahead. The, the reason I'm sorry I kind of jumped ahead is that what we have approved as far as renovations and work, the house now looks, if we were just to renovate it, will look totally different than what sits there today. So there's an apple sitting there today that we have permission to turn into an orange. And through turning it into an orange, we need a new first floor system, new second floor system. We're putting in, we've got approval for all the Anderson windows in new locations. Going to be putting in a lot of new framing for those windows. We've got a new big gable on the Cliff Road side. That's going to be new material. So when everything's said and done, there's not going to be much left of the orange that used to be an apple. You know, maybe it would be, do we have a copy of what was approved by way of changes? Because if you want to make the case that the changes that have been approved are so extensive that it justifies it the demo, I think we need to have them side by side so that we can compare them and make that judgment. We don't have a stamp. Do you have, have a schedule either before anything? Because you have three, is that you put it on a view with that information? You know, my, my suggestion is, is that uh, we've made, other than trying to clarify the application, nobody has made a comment about the merits of the application. What I'd like to do is hold this for view without comment. The view pack ought to include the previous approval for alterations to the existing structure. That way, when it comes back next week, you can get a full board as well, and we're, we're truly ready to hear the application. Okay. So is that your motion, Abby? Yes. I have a question for the chairman. Yes. Um, does your house now have shutters on it? Uh, in some areas, and on the rear of the house, there's some, and there's, and I don't know if they've just fallen off over time because of. John, no. you'll have a chance to see that yeah. when you view it. Right. So on the motion to view without comment, with the previous approval for alterations, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Sorry it was brief, but I, yeah. I think this is the way to do it. Okay, so, so you, you, you want to see uh, basically two, the, the, the uh, application approved in October yes. with the five bays yes. versus the seven that's existing yep. so, side by side. Yes. Do you need that from us, or do you, or do you extract it from your I can file? make a copy of the approval and put it in the you pack. But if you, wanted the yeah, no, if yeah. you wanted to augment that with a demonstration showing the differences between what you're proposing or what would be left or something like that, that might be helpful on a floor plan. Or, but I don't think they're requiring that as part of what they're going to go see in the pack. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, could, um, could, could I make uh, one, one comment that, um, you know, this got a little little away from us right here. Uh, didn't expect this, but anyways, uh, in, in, in the site viewing, keep in mind this is a, uh, a redevelopment uh, pro project right here. Yes. Uh, this is the third application of four. Two have already been, or three of them have been approved, in, including this one right here, mm -hmm. uh, with major, re major renovations. But uh, I think it's in, in, uh, important to, to know that when you're up there that you will not see whatever building is sitting here from Cliff Road because there will be two, uh, two other buildings 
in its in in in, in place of it. Not. I recommend that you give to us then for the view pack a site plan that shows what where, what the future development is going to be, where the future buildings are going, so that we can establish what sight lines are going to exist going into the future. Sure. No, that, that's not good. Just in, I mean, just in general merit, though, I just wanted you, you to understand if you're, if you're going no, if you're going up there to look at it, yeah. that there's two other structures in, in the way between Cliff and the house. Okay. That's it. But bear in mind, when this comes back, there'll be two other members sitting on it who are not present at the moment. So include any material, that, explanatory material, that you think is important to your case in the view pack so that they see it when they go there. So we just email it to me on sure. Friday. Sure, sure. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. And, it, and it's for, um, this coming Tuesday? If we get the information by Friday, this we'll Tuesday. hear it next Tuesday. Okay. Okay? okay. Oh, thank you, David. Good. Thank you. James, if we... Email things to you. What's the largest you can print? Eleven by seventeen. Eleven by seventeen. Probably, if you're going to go larger than that, you would want to bring out. You would want to print those yourself. Um, Color site plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then we'll bring that to you. Okay. 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 And some emails. Great. Go get them, Jeff. Go, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> you too. All right. Yes. Um. You know what? Uh, question: Where Linda and Don? Uh, I don't even know if Don's going to sit on this. Who will be the other members? It would be uh, Jason and Diane. Jason Finger. Okay. And Diane. Okay. Diane. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. well, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. An application for an addition of circa 1920. East elevation windows added, in addition, south screen bed to porch, as well as in the west and the north. And some photos to go with that. You don't have some? Representing the applicants? Please go well. What is your email again? My computer dropped your email. Uh, T H Thornwell Design T H O R J P W I L L Design. I have contacts on that. So it's the addition of a single story mass, sixteen by twenty feet, at the south elevation, and you want to screen the existing porch. Remove portion of the exterior wall with the additions to be constructed. Renovate the kitchen and add a bathroom. And closet from the first floor in location of the existing dining room. And place windows where it goes. I had issues with the screened in porch on the road. 41, 498. Please say where it is. I know where it is. What are you um, I think we're doing something sympathetic to the uh, historic structure and it being a simple one story mass. Uh, grand windows, I, I think, are consistent with the, uh, the front of the house. And um, it's just very simple. Uh, the screen in porch is something the uh, homeowners would really like to have. Um, and that's it. Okay. David? Screen and porch right on the street is not appropriate on North Florida. It's on the street. It's an existing porch. It's adding screens in between the existing posts. We've never seen a screen and porch on the street side on the street. Where are the adding posts? You're not reframing that porch to accomplish this. You're just installing screen sash, is that correct? You'd be adding po yeah, posts and panels. You see, now you don't and, uh, I think at that point you, you, you're moving far from, yeah. I mean, yeah I so you've got balusters, then you go to panels, okay. then you go to screens on the front right. of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could, yeah, exactly. We could work with the balusters. I have that up before. I'm not going there. I think it's problematic 
Hebrew. Um, I think that Linda, would you find it more appropriate if there was a porch applied to the street side face of the addition being put on, so that it was moved further back from the street? You're going to have to view then. Yeah. Because you don't have any screen porches on the street. The street, the street. Yeah. I, I don't mind if it's back <coughs> on, let's say the screen porch moved back, 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 but there isn't anywhere to go back. Right. Right. And it's really hard on the street. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen glassed in porches. Yeah. But they don't have screens in them in the summer. Yeah. Well, and I've seen old porches where, you know, there's sashes that are, that are simply set in to the existing porch spacing, but this is effectively a rebuilt structure. I think you'll have to take it out. Well, I, it's just that the, uh, the spans between posts are pretty, they're pretty big. Yeah. I don't know if it would be a rebuild, but I could certainly be, we would be adding posts if we weren't going to rebuild it. Then you get this little weird lattice that's already on the house. That's you, you need, I know. You need to look at the house. How do, you feel about, how do you feel about the addition since you're making comments already? I don't have great concerns about the addition. I think it's in character. It's a lot of gang windows, and it's the, and that is aggravated by making the windows on the sidewall ganged. But there are existing ganged windows on the front of the house, so it's not as if it's not part of the vocabulary. Actually, it's, it's, it's just a question as to whether or not. I mean, the thing if you start at the at the front of the house, ignoring the screening, you've got two pair of ganged windows on the front gable. You go around the side, they're adding a pair of ganged windows on the side where there's a single window now. And then you go across the face of the addition, and there are two more pair of ganged, and then it's, it's a triple gang. And then it's a little uh, house. Get on very simple house. So yeah. it's, it's a lot. On one side, there are existing two groups of two gangs. So it's, it, you know, if you look at it, I mean. But not every window on this thing should be ganged. I know, it's, it's a small, it's very it's simple house. Two. I, I, I think that this is a house where gang windows are appropriate, but, but I think that this is pushing it a little further than it probably ought to go. Um, so maybe we make a viewing on this one. Twelve ganged windows on the first floor. That's too many. That's hey, Linda, there's two on two sides of the house. Well, I know that, but now you're adding another, like, ten, but it's and consistent. that's not appropriate. I, I guess what I'm just saying is it's... Consistent. consistent with the first story of window type as it, as it are doubles. That, but not all case. of them are doubles. And now you're adding more mass where everything on that mass is doubled. That's not appropriate. It needs to be a blend of stuff because you're, you've got blend of stuff. Not every single new window should be ganged. That's overdoing it. And then it becomes the predominant window as opposed to then the bottom <coughs> on the left. David, you want to view? John, do you have any comments? Yes, I do. I I would like to state that being in the old historic district area, the screens are fine, I believe, because other people have screen skin portions. It's typical to have to want that. But the panels are not appropriate. I don't think any of them are. They should shingle up to that rail at the bottom of the screen. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I think that should be done. The other one, this one is just this watch. Yeah. But it's, it's not. Nice yeah. yeah. This one here, this might be a, a kill piano. It's cute. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. But, you know, you just find not a lot of stuff. I think it's a minor thing. You don't have to. If it was someplace else, it would work. David's made a motion to view. All those in favor? That'll come in. Thank you. All those in favor of that? Aye. Okay. Aye. Uh, Matt. Luke, I think he's probably in the hallway. So is, on that 50%, is that on one wall? Or on the that plane of the house. On, on, that plane, on a plane of the house. Okay. John. 
Didn't make it. Okay. Well, no, no, no. Stretch. You the ball mark. No, it's not allowed. Why do you do Blackfish Lane now to be revised to UCOA 60472, adding a window well? Scott's Revised <coughs> Ward had no concerns. Who did? Scott's Revised Ward had no concerns. Yeah, I left it in the box for them. And this is only what? A window well. All right, what I got confused about was the garage. That's not happening on this, right? No, that's already done. Right. So where's the window well? Here? Uh, nope. Here? Yeah. Okay, you got to circle that stuff. Yeah. I have no idea. This is a big project. That's why I was like, what? Yeah, I was actually looking for it. I don't think the window well ought to bump out beyond the foundation of the existing bump out. I think they ought to align. Which is where? No. Where are you? I'm uh, sheet A1.1, top left, the floor plan. From second page. Second page, top left. I see there's a word uh, that the well out. Out the line. That's going to be an ugly condition. But isn't that part of the stupid thing that we couldn't view? That's why some of this got approved. I think it's going to be visible at all. So. I don't think it's visible because we've been out there for every single one of these three structures. And we, you approved a lot of weird stuff going on back here because you couldn't see it. I would agree. There's, and well, you know, interestingly, you've drawn it two different ways on the plan. Yeah. On the last sheet, you've shown it in alignment with the bump out. So... Um, mm -hmm. My motion would be to approve as applied for and described on the last sheet of the application. So you want it flush with the bump out. That's the yeah. simplest way to do it. Just, just go to English. No problem. Those questions for the minute. Is going to be a great there? Oh, yes, it'll thanks. be great. Great. Thank you. David, your motion is what? To approve with the, the window well flush with the bump out? Right. As shown on sheet A2.1. We're ready. Thank you. Thank you All much. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay, we approved one. I'm sure we get a chance to. There's some all the consent and actually be signed box. Oh, you brought them over here. I didn't want you to have to carry an extra box, but Well, I just wanted to catch you before you went or you can come back over there. Oh, I'll do them right here. Boy, some of these minutes can really go back a long way. And it would be clear some of that out of Terry it. Terry didn't do all of them. That's why it took a little while to get in. Okay. So these are all review minutes. Wow. Yeah, because they weren't done by Terry. Okay. Okay. I think some of them, maybe November. But right. That's it. Okay. Yeah, we've got mid-November here. That really goes back. I'm surprised we don't have people screaming about... They don't care. Most in. of those people are done already. Do well, you they haven't been ratified, but there's nobody, there's nobody appealing. It's not like an issue. Yeah. yeah. Then we'd have to have them, we'd have to do it. Do you want them resent? Because they came from multiple people. It would be nice to get them as a bunch. All right, yeah, I'll because I, otherwise I have to dig back through two months of emails looking for ones here and there. Okay. And then um, what we need to do is. What we need to do, I brought, I put it on the review of HCC meeting and application deadline schedule because um, Jason, myself, and Don wanted the meeting during uh, February vacation, which I believe James is the 26th, maybe. Okay. And whatever that is, uh, canceled. I'm, I'm, I saw that email traffic. I'm fine with that. If we're sure. We have to vote that. Um, but what we ought to vote then is a revised copy of the schedule. Right. At Tuesday's meeting. No, it's on here now. We need to get Do it done. So they have to they have to resend it out. He's already redone it, based on that. But we have to formally. My vote motion to do it. is to approve an alteration of the schedule for February to include the deletion of the February what meeting and a adjustment of these. What is today? What was? Today's the 6th. Is it 11th? So we're talking 18th. about 13th, 20th. 25th. 25th. There you go. Is it canceled? 
Yeah. All those in favor. Oh, I love it. those things. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. I'm not sure I finished my motion. I think we all know what I'm trying to do. Yes, he knows what you're what? doing. We're trying to we're trying to vote a revised schedule for our meetings and alternation of old and new business meetings to accommodate uh, deleting the meeting that occurs 25th. over the winter break. On the 25th. On the 25th of February. All those in favor? Aye. John, Gabby? Deleting the meeting of when? So it's February 25th. February 25th. Reschedule that that we missed? No. no. We're simply not going to meet that week, so no. everything moves a week. Everything's shifted. Everything shifted. Is everybody in favor? Oh, sure. I'm in favor. Yes. Yes. Now, the other part of this was on old business, and I've discussed it with the administrator, and James and I have discussed it uh, ad nauseum. On the deadline schedule for old business, there's no reason why they can't get their new business in by Wednesday where they need it because it takes two days to review them. Old business, they're having trouble 18 hours after the meeting getting them in. So those who don't get the revisions in this week for next Tuesday are off till March. Yeah, I, I understand, but... And all they have to do is put them on the agenda. There's no review. It's simply take the revisions in. Oh, yeah, you're in. Not going back to Friday at noon because that creates a lot of problems for James because they have to have the agenda in within two hours of noon. Okay. So it was 4 o'clock Thursday is what everybody thought would work. Four, you want to make the new date 4 o'clock Thursday? Only for old business. For old business. That's it. Okay. Okay. And the question I have to ask then is, is that a workable deadline if there's only one person in the office? Yeah, um, and, uh, Katie is going to be given... I think so. I think that that still works um, for old business because um, we have everybody on, on deck for the deadline schedule. So when that when that comes up, it's not a problem. The, the question is the turnaround time after that, but um, there, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Because it don't We've it doesn't require so far, so. and it doesn't require the level of review it does to split them into views, split them right. into consent. Right. So it just come in and they, they sign them. This is just information. No, they. Administration wants a motion, so would we you, support would that. Would you phrase the motion and I'll consider making it? Okay, that the old business deadline for revisions is now 4 o'clock on Thursday. That's my motion. David's made a motion to move the old business uh, deadline to 4 o'clock on Thursday. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Then I'm concerned about Exhibit A procedure, and I had this discussion with the powers that be. Excuse me, I don't know what Exhibit A procedure is. Okay. Is. What happens is that Exhibit, I caught this only last week. James, you were out. I caught this last week, and I had another go around with Mark, and I said, what happens to Exhibit A when we mark up Exhibit A? Okay. And we put it in the file. Yeah. And they have to bring, there. he's telling everybody they have to bring in a new plan, taking everything off of Exhibit A and putting it on a new plan. But he's not marking the new plans as Exhibit A. So when we make a motion in the minutes to approve Exhibit A, we have no Exhibit A in the file because when the new plans come in, Exhibit A is thrown out. Exhibit A, in everybody's estimation, should never be thrown out of that thing. And then any new plan that comes in has to be whatever James has to stamp it or do whatever has to be labeled Exhibit A because we approved Exhibit A. I agree. And if that happened at the ZBA or the Planning Board, we'd be screwed. Well, you know, I, there are occasions where we approve Exhibit A, and it's, and we also attach the condition that we want corrected drawings through staff. And in that circumstance, I believe the file going forward ought to contain both Exhibit A as approved at the table and the new drawings and the corrected drawings. That's not what's been happening. Well, exhibit A has been going out the door, and the new ones coming in based on Exhibit A are not marked Exhibit A. So what we voted on okay. is no longer in the file. I would like to make a motion that in the future, plans marked Exhibit A at HDC meetings be retained in the file in addition to any other corrected drawings that may be demanded of the applicant as part of the application. We ran into this, James, you were again not there, I wish you had been, but what I also want you to say is that the new plans that are being submitted based on Exhibit A need to be marked Exhibit A. So they track together. That's where the disconnect also occurs. So if Exhibit I, A stays in the plan, you don't know where these other plans came from. I think they ought to be marked as corrected drawings to conform with the requirements of Exhibit A so that 
10 or 15 years from now, you open it up and you see this is exhibit A marked up at the table and these are the corrected drawings. You don't have two things that are different, both marked exhibit A. And the reason you do that is that in some, sooner or later, somebody's going to submit corrected drawings that either omit or garble the intent of exhibit A. And you don't want to have two things mark exhibit A that are co-equal. You want to be able to say, this is what the HDC meant. This is what they submitted with the they intent. They match. With the James, intent of James matching. Okay. They match, right? You look at been, I mean, I always was under the impression that we could need at least for three years until the COA was no longer valid and we got to reapply anyway. No, apparently exhibit A, according to Mark, are thrown out. No, and that's what's caused really the good. argument the other day. In, in red ink so that, that you can, when they open the file, they can see exactly. Well, the problem is we don't always have red ink well, with just us. Carry red, you just carry well, red we'll make sure that we have a red pen. Yeah, okay. and then it, then it will say exhibit A in red and, and the changes. Yeah, but the point is exhibit A needs to stay in the file. And then any plans coming in that duplicate Exhibit A that are hardlined as opposed to are marking it up need to be marked as Exhibit A corrected drawings. Okay. So both of them will track. We're losing that complete okay, track. Okay, so I'll restate my motion. <coughs> my motion is that in the future, plans approved as Exhibit A by the HDC are to be retained in the project file along with any corrected drawings no, submitted to conform with the requirements of Exhibit A. Corrected drawings are to be noted as such. Okay. Okay? We'll just get that to, we'll get it to Katie, get it to whoever else is touching them. All in favor? All Aye. in favor? Aye. Okay. That's, that would, I didn't know that was happening until just the other day. Well, the only person that would be doing that would have been Mark because He's the one that does the staff approvals and they wouldn't have thrown anything away. So and he keeps, and he told me point blank, I'm throwing them all away. Right. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a meeting about We've that. Saw, yeah. Can we move on? Yeah. Yep. So I don't know if you want to go over these with just the four of us here. I've got to go take my son to the doctor. I do, because we asked for prompt action on some of these building enforcement matters that are open to the weather, and we have not heard a thing. We expected to hear over a month ago, and we're not even, as I understand it from you, we're not even getting our emails returned. Actually, we've been, uh, this has been, Carry along since this was first on the agenda. That marks the printout. We should make one for everybody. Yeah, but and we uh, had a meeting with town council before <coughs> the end of the year, at which time we asked for the preparation of letters to the owners of these property that could be approved by HDC and sent right after the turn of the year. And we're now heading into the middle of February, and we've had no response whatsoever. And I really want to shake the tree hard. I've been asking for weeks why we can't move this thing off the dawn. All right, give me the ones you want me to go to town council over again. 86 May. Right, 82 I sent up there. Good. And 11, 11 Baxter Road, which has done nothing. But we had to back off when they came in and got approvals for a little while. They haven't done it. It's, it's still, the buildings are collapsing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. It's actually in better shape than you think it is. Well, it would... It's hard to imagine because the buildings, hard to imagine. walls are falling off the buildings. Oh, 11 buildings Baxter. I was, thinking, I was thinking 11 uh, Milestone Road. No, 11 yeah. Baxter Road. I got that. Uh, in Davis House. Yeah. Yeah. All right, anything as you get moved down onto the rest of them? I don't know what those are. And I, I don't have time to sit think, here and have James do one at a time. I think we deal with the signs. Um, you know, I think it makes sense. I, I think, again, we want... Uh, on the signs, I think that stu is stuff that ought to be processed through the plus department. I don't think it's appropriate at this time to involve town council. But we, we, need a, we need an explanation because those, these explanations here are not what's wrong. You were asking for an update. You said the properties had to be listed individually on, yeah. the, on the agenda. Yeah, you do have to list it that way. Yeah. Um, this, there are multiple copies of this. This is the printouts. Last time we were able to do something about the signs. But if, those items. James, who put this list together, Mark? That one's that one came from K. Did Mark? It was one that I guess people had been logging in up to this point, and then Mark forwarded to me, and I took over the sign part of it, and he's still doing the other part. Because he's required to do it once a month, and he hasn't. That was October. But what concerns me is 82 Main Street, David. Yeah. You want to give? 
Is there a copy for that? Those are all multi. There's Sorry. A <laughs> copy what it concerns me, <laughs> we can't go that. David, yeah. he's got under 82 Main Street, minimum maintenance, trim around the door falling off. That's Are you serious? Come on. Come on, Mark. Um, you know, I've sent in numerous emails and letters complaining that the roof was never completely installed. The rain is pouring through the roof. You're talking about 86 now. On 86. Yeah, yeah. 82. Look at the back of 82. It's worse than 86. Okay. We, we need to move this off square one. And it years go by, and we accomplish nothing. And I'm really sick of it. But this isn't even the whole list. It's not the whole list. On the sign violations... Well, from James's point of view for the signs, but this isn't the list that we've been moaning and groaning about. And it doesn't even have the right what's wrong with it. Well, this is a very partial right. list on the signs. But even so, you know, having a list is, is fine, but if nothing ever gets done on the list, what's the point? I mean, I, I would like to. Coffee cup. I didn't notice. I'd that. like to suggest that at Tuesday's meeting, when we have the full board here, we take a motion to request of the plus department a schedule uh, on which uh, and a time by which they hope to have these addressed. You see, a few letters have been sent out. What I got five letters on here. I know James works with the sign committee and all those guys, and I know they're reporting to you regularly. The sign committee is reporting to me that if they don't start seeing some enforcement on signs, they're going to quit because it's been years, and it's a waste of their time turning up reviewing stuff that is never enforced. I don't blame them. Make sure. Take care of that if you way. want people to volunteer their time, you've got to respect the the gift that's being given, and at least act uh, on the advice that they're providing. James, you've got a couple on the sign thing that are listed as, a, as an issue, but then it says no violation. Is that because you guys have done your thing? And no, no, it just means that we have to, from the email that town council said, as an authorized agent, we have to actually go out and witness it ourselves. Take a picture. Take a picture. So I took a picture on that date. That doesn't mean it won't be there the next time I go back and look, but that date that I went out was not there. Okay. Like the fudge sign probably won't be out until the spring. And the coffee cup? Coffee cup. That went away, that went away. I think. <laughs> the, the thing with the, by the way, the thing with the, the Anlia's fudge, we actually went around with that when I first arrived here. That sign was grandfathered, but not in that location. It's, he's got a grandfathered uh, freestanding sign, but it's not supposed to be on the sidewalk. And then that becomes a public hazard, and it really is supposed to be the police or DBW to deal with it, but they don't want to deal with it. Where is so it supposed to be? It's supposed to be in the courtyard, or at least in the entrance there. It's not supposed to be actually out on the sidewalk. Isn't it supposed to be in the courtyard, like with the sign facing the yeah. sidewalk? Because yeah. that's where it used to be next to the bench. Everything back yet yeah, inside that area. Yeah, because I thought it was weird when it first moved out. Years back, it was in the courtyard. That's where it's supposed to be. Right. Because I remember looking in it and being able to see Aunt Leah's sign because you couldn't really see her in the back. Well, you know what they do in Boston, John, is they send out the DPW in Boston and they just, any signs or anything that's on the sidewalk like that, shh, into the dump. <laughs> yeah. So right in the back of the truck. All right, so we have to get a better handle on, I'm going to leave the sign issue up to you. We've got to get a better handle on, I remember all those emails that were going back and forth with Kevin and David there before Christmas, which wasn't helpful, but it at least showed there was an issue. You know, no, on, on the contrary. I just want a single list from both of you, not 500 emails, which was not helpful to anybody. Look, we supplied photographs with the stuff, and you can't load all that stuff up. We have Andrew in here saying that he was unaware of any violations, where all of us here know that there have been violations that have existed for years with no action. And so I went out, I photographed the locations, I emailed them in so the office would have the documentary evidence it needs to proceed, and so that we wouldn't have the director of the department claiming that there was no problem. Did you get all those emails? Before Christmas, all oh, it was like rapid fire between Kevin or just after Christmas between Kevin and David. There was like 20 of them per. Um, well, I think it was not these the issues that were on here, or I'm not. No, there are more because I remember that there were a lot more. I think I still have them all. I think I've got to go back and find them. More than what's listed here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there were this other. This came ones. from K. This is the list that I'm operating off of. Yeah, I'll, if and I can I've got find them all. Photos and other stuff like that. This is where that originally. Right, if I can find them all, I'll. 
ship them over to you. I think I kept them all. We've also got her doing a new brochure for HTC. I've got or it, and she's going to give me copies of it for next week. So, do you want to? We have to add that to the agenda. Is this a dally or a draft, or is this just a, a little draft? It's pretty cool, but she's been waiting for information from Mark for weeks, which hasn't come. But it's a pretty little thing, James. Have you looked at it carefully? Uh, no, I have not. All right, so HGC brochure, and this is something that the uh, work group is working on also, but if for a starter, just to get it going, it's something that could very easily be reproduced, is and it's a Word document. Okay, so you can link to it on the on the web. Yep, and you can put them in a little stack in the office somewhere in some all right. place, and then the work group is going to work off of that and see if we can't get all the information into that little piece. If we can't, what came from Charleston was an actual, actual sheets. Okay. Okay, and David, what I'd like you to do, because they're still waiting for it, is for you to work on the Boston fee schedule, because we want to yeah. approve that sooner rather than later. All right. So the HTC brochure, James, was there something else we had going next week? Oh, at the beginning of the meeting, Kevin was going to come in and show us what these trash bins look like and do a little trash bin uh, representation. Yeah. Mahogany. You want mahogany on the beach? Oh, yeah, you go try to move it. Well, you don't move them. Um, they, they move them off. They move them all off the beaches in the winter because the winter. they flood. Okay. And you're going to have a mahogany, a ten thousand dollar mahogany trash bin floating down Brand Point. Really break the fire on the beach. And yeah, so somebody will decimate it. They don't care about the plastic ones down there, but okay. they're only there for three months. Okay. So the trash bins. I think Kevin wanted to do that at the beginning of the meeting. What was the thing about the solar trash bins? That's what we're putting on the agenda for the beginning of next week, so Kevin can at least show us a picture well, of what the hell they're talking about. What does the well, solar this solar do? The idea did trash. not come from Kevin, it came from the town association. Oh, I know, but we have no information because we haven't seen what they're talking about except for this lovely $10,000 mahogany thing. What does a, um, the Carol what Cross does solar panel do to the trash? It's a, it's electric. It's a it trash compact. Yes, it compacts it. Yes, it compacts. compacts it? To make it heavier for the guys to pick up so when it spills all over the... Yeah, how about that? They can't get them out of the bag and it rips. And yeah. you know, I gathered that the plan was to use some of these out at the beach as a test. Yeah. But the town association decided they wanted them also to be tested on the and strip. installed on the strip. And, and that was what the... <coughs> That's where the, the rubber met the road about. last week. Yeah. Does, does, do the trash bins not work as they work as they, they are? They work now? fine. No. The problem is is that no. even though they're empty twice a day, they're, constant, they're still overflowing. And the seagulls get them. There's no way to protect them at the so. moment. And when we were kids, Jane, those, we didn't have any. We had, I think, the black wrought iron or something. It's something pretty simple. I don't remember the, the top. Remember the, the green ones? The tops with the cut-out cardboard top on it, with the hole in it. Yeah, we had before that, when you were, maybe you were too young, maybe. we had green trash barrels, just standard and green trash that. barrels with tops. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, and I mean years. Years. Uh, they, you still use them in those days, 55-gallon drums. And they make a bag that fits all 55-gallon drums. And they had them in gray, and then green or green and then gray. And they had them around with the caps on to fit them. They're beautiful. They started using the wooden barrels. And this is where the problem is. You put the bag in. People put it in, they pack it down, they keep packing it, right? And then the curve of the barrel, you, you usually have 55 gallons of you lay it down and the bag slides right out. And, and, and the other one, it's stuck and then you pull it and the bag rips, you know? But I say, I brought that up to, to, to the, uh, in, the, in the letter that I sent. Could they please do something about going back to the old style, you know? So maybe that's where the kick came from that. You know, the great thing about having John here is that he's it's so great. old, he was here when they invented trash. Right? <laughs> and, and so... It's funny you <laughs> well, I remember the entire history. History. I remember the old green benches. They didn't have fancy benches, but yeah. I do like those yeah. half black wrought iron and half wood. I think those are very attractive. I've, I've gone history. back and looked, at, looked for old trash barrels, and before John's period, I think you may be right about that, because... Just oil drums? There just wasn't trash. There no wasn't trash. the degree no. of trash yeah. that we have today. Yes. So and remember, we only had, we had the we penny patch on Main Street, we had the, um, the Sandpiper. We had Arno's. We bought fish. It was in the newspaper. That was it. We had the A&P, but nobody, there was no strip. It was People all didn't eat industrial. Eat on, the, on the street. No. You know, these, you know, you those businesses, in effect, generate a lot of trash mm -hmm. by virtue of the way they package their products. Take out. They could be doing more to, to manage the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. 
But it's only certain places, right? I mean, it's the Strip and parts of... The strip, you know, North Main Street, you've got these clusters of three trash barrels, which I guess the plan is now to reduce them to two, because even though they've got a barrel for, for trash, plastic, and glass... In fact, nobody sorts the recyclables, so after they empty them, they have to take them back to the dump and sort them again anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And you understand that even with a compactor, they're going to have to be sorted. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's ugly. Yeah. Um, could I change subjects for a second? Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep moving forward on this enforcement thing. Yeah. I'll try to get you a, a, a pass at the Boston fee schedule. Yep. You know, the structure of it is quite simple. I think that what we need to do um, is, is, well... And we I'll, meet next one, next Wednesday. This is your group? Yeah, and we want I to will, take a look at it. If you can I'm do it. I'm going off island Wednesday morning for my anniversary, but I will try to have something to leave with you. Okay? Where are you going to go? We're going to Boston. I married the girl on Valentine's Day, so I'm taking her off my island and treating her well. I married Chuck on Valentine's Day. There you go. And six years later, I got divorced oh, from I'm, Chuck on Valentine's I'm Day. It's, I'm hoping it's going to work better for me. Yeah. <laughs> the, judge, the judge was laughing when I went in to get the divorce. Yeah, yeah. The judge was laughing, and we couldn't figure out why he was laughing, and we finally realized that he said, you were married on Valentine's Day? Yeah. And you're six getting divorced on day. Valentine's Day? And we're going, yeah. I said, do you want to pick another date? We can put this off. I said, no. <laughs> now it's good. Now it's good. Um, I sit on the uh, committee that the uh, Preservation Trust uh, delegates to find uh, projects that deserve a preservation award uh, in the summer. And um, I've they, nominated people. They haven't taken any of my nominations. Well, I don't know why. Um, but they, you know, they, I think they're going to take out an ad in the newspaper. But typically, they don't get very many nominations. And um, I do every year. I, I have somebody. suggested that if they print out a page explaining the program and asking for nominations, that we might be willing to put it out on the rostrum there next to the. Uh, agendas because it would be a way to yeah, inform people, the yeah. building community that this program exists and maybe get them interested. With the if issue. you give it to me in email, I can email blast it to the Village Association in my contact list. Okay, but would, would, if, if they want to furnish some some handouts, is it acceptable to the HDC to uh, allow them to be displayed? Madam Chair? Whatever you like to do. Okay, thank you. I just didn't want to. But email it to me, and I'll email it out to all my people. Okay, but you know. Yeah, let's put that for, for next week for the discussion. What is is your bike rack? Haven't we dealt with those town. bike racks? Where are those? Where is that? John, can I make a recommendation? Um, there is a design, an informal design review committee that Kevin Kuster is, is has put together. Okay. That's working with DPW and Libby and others to deal with things like bike racks and trash barrels because the town made it clear that they didn't think street furniture was in the jurisdiction of the HDC, but they have been willing to work on these issues with a separate design advisory group. So go to Kevin with your questions no, first. I'll let it go. No, no, it's not something. Somebody's looking at it. Yeah, they're paying, they're paying attention to it. Anyway, I think I'm the last one. Yep. Uh, no. If we're done, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. No, please. Oh, we have one to go. No, yeah. we, we got this. We got this yeah. before yeah. We got this before Christmas. I think. Yeah, three. Could you give one to the other member? Okay. You can't. Yeah, John, you gave this to us back before Christmas. Right, but I, I made extra just for, for one thing. The only reason I well, it, I want Alex to take three minutes to explain it in my own view is probably self explanatory, but the way I feel is it? Is it? You know, to save time at the meeting, you know, and I say, well, what I find the biggest thing that I find is people injecting their opinions when when someone's talking. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to say feel sorry for you. This, this is, and that, and that's the wall. Uh, the uh, if we took this procedure, I just think about it, and then we'll talk about it next week. But everybody gets a copy. And I'd like to hear their opinions because this might expedite, expedite time 
all of us doing it because if, if Linda would get a little stronger and when somebody interjects, I bought a trolling pole, all right? I don't like to hear it. But they're, they're one of the biggest offenders they got. You mention a window, oh, well, that's, that's that. They, Linda should say, hey, that's it. He's got the floor. Everybody has their speak and it goes around and then the Linda speaks last to cover everything that we missed. And I, I just feel that uh, this, this would make it a lot quicker for us. And, and, and as it says, every, all five make their comments. And then if the applicant wants to discuss why one said something, why he said something, give them the time. But, but when they sit there and tell you, we already know what they're trying to do, it's in, it's in the plans. Then they sit there, explain and making a presentation. That's the longest time. We tell them, you know, you want to, we, if we need a presentation, we'll ask for it if there's a difficulty. But, you know, I don't think there is. You know, we all got common sense. We've been here long enough. I, I think that we should just go ahead and do that. And, and, and the other one is, is Linda, yourself, all right? Uh, when, like, Dave is talking about something or someone else, you know, and you, you butt in. I would let them, let them finish. And, and then, then you could bring up your opinion. You know, when you interject that, it upsets the whole thing and it messes my hair enough. That well, John, at times you have to clarify the drawing because it's completely out of whack. Right, but who's going to clarify it? The chairman, the like Dirk, used to clarify it. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing where it's necessary because right. sometimes the drawing comes in. I've already seen them all. Right. I'm going. So yeah, sometimes we need to yeah. clarify where it is or which right. lot it is. And that's what the chairman does, and then you can go off on the merits. It's okay. just clarification. Let me give you my feelings, right? A couple of weeks ago, David was talking about something. But everybody spoke, and then David interjected something he forgot. And he brought it up, and you didn't agree with him, and you blew him apart. And people said this to me, too, you know. It, 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 that's, you know, blowing people apart has got to come to a halt, no matter which commission member, me or anybody else, you know. You know, you know you just argue with him, you know, you, you know. You're not going to do this, you can't do that, that that's got to come to a halt, you know? And a lot of these people that come in this room, as applicants or representatives, they've come to me, you know, and I'm usually a, try to be the quiet one here if I can, you know? And they, they've come drunk, man, we, we can tighten that meeting up. Okay, I'll make a suggestion. So that, that's my suggestion here. If you could please go over this next week and get your opinion on how you feel and We'll, we'll proceed from there if it's okay. You know? That's what I like to do. Thank you. I just I do agree with John that too many times they're sitting over here and they're arguing as each person comments. Mm -hmm. I'll let that go for a little bit if there's like a point of clarification, usually yeah. with your comments. But they do it every single person. They speak, 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 and it's driving me nuts. Okay. I'll you know I for my part I will try to uh, shut that down. Yeah. Also, I, I realize that sometimes I get involved in the conversation, yeah. and without intending to, I'm encouraging them to keep going, and I'll, I'll try to not do that. <laughs> You're right. And your Botticelli and Paul, they do it all the time. Yeah. And it's neeny, 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 and yeah. that's got to stop yeah. because that wastes a tremendous amount of time. Uh, I'd like to state that you know, in, in the future I'm going to be going to the guidebook rewrite committee you know, with some stuff that I think you know, in the old historic area it's tightened down and let the young trophy homes and all that stuff, you know, people don't even see them, they don't care. But the important thing is the two sections of town in Wisconsin. We don't have that committee yet. We are not there yet. we are not there, okay, but I mean when they do... I'll, I'll, <coughs> Linda, do you have an email list that you send out notices at the Wednesday meetings of when that group is gathering? Or do they just know to turn up? <coughs> we post them. Could I get listed on whoever gets that? Because frankly, they, those meetings have been going right by me. <coughs> this is HDC the work group. HDC work group. Or meeting every two, week, two weeks at the moment. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I, I wonder if I'm... I wind up remembering the day after or something. Yeah. I'd like to be active as an observer. Linda, could you put me on that? Linda, your cough sounds better since you got a fish. You've had that for a few God. years. Anyway, motion to adjourn? John's made a motion to adjourn at... Oh, David did, I'm sorry. That's David made a motion to adjourn at 2.39.
Now, I made a motion to adjourn about 20 minutes ago, but you know, it's not as being repetitious. But I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dave, did your mother have any children in the Any nice children, you mean? Yeah.